In today's video, I'll be giving you an overview of a load balancer. This is not an in-depth review, but rather a basic introduction to help you understand how it works. The router I'm showing here is a load balancing router. With this device, if you have two internet connections, you can either balance the load between them or use one as a fallback. That means if one internet connection goes down for any reason, the other connection will automatically keep your devices and home network running smoothly. This router also comes with built-in VPN support. With that feature, you can connect your VPN service directly to the router, or even configure the router itself as a VPN server. In that case, you'll be able to securely connect to your home network from outside through VPN using the internet connection available on this router. So, let's explore this router a little more closely and understand how it works. Here, you can see the login screen. Whenever we access the router's interface, this is what will appear. To log in, we simply use the default username and password. The login requires a specific IP address, which is clearly mentioned on the sticker at the back of the device. On that same sticker, you'll also find the default username and password needed to access the system. Here you can see the router's default status dashboard. From this screen, you can view detailed information about every module on the device and quickly understand their condition and function. You'll be able to tell whether a module is online or offline, how it's performing, how much load it's handling, and how it's operating, all laid out step by step. The dashboard even shows which module is responsible for each specific task. This is a multi one device, which is why you can see multiple WAN connections listed here. Next, you'll notice a module called Load Balancing, followed by the LAN option. After that, there's the VPN option, then the DHCP server, followed by a section for device settings, and finally the system option. At the very top of the dashboard, you can see the bandwidth graph, which shows you exactly how much bandwidth your network is currently using. Next, you can see 1.1. When we open its details, we find that this one connection is currently connected to the internet in dynamic mode. From here, we can view all the details of this connection, and if needed, we can modify the settings or reconfigure it for a new connection. This WAN can be configured in three different ways. Dynamic IP, in this mode, no additional settings are required. Simply select the dynamic option, and the configuration will be applied automatically. PPPOE, in this case, your ISP will provide you with a username and password, which you'll need to enter here to establish the connection. Static IP, for this mode, your ISP will provide you with a static IP address along with gateway, subnet mask, and DNS details, which must be entered manually. 1.2 can be configured just like 1.1, and you can even add more 1 connections if needed. This WAN is currently connected in dynamic mode, and you can view or modify its settings here. A 1 can be set up in three ways. Dynamic IP, automatic setup, no extra settings needed. PPPOE, connect using ISP provided username and password. Static IP, manually enter ISP provided IP, gateway, subnet, and DNS details. With the load balancing option, you can use two internet connections simultaneously. You can create multiple rules according to your needs, combining the speeds of both connections or setting up a fallback so that if one connection goes down, the other keeps your internet running smoothly. There are many advanced configurations possible, but covering them all in detail would make the video very long. So here, I'm giving a small overview. Now, you're looking at the load balancing interface. This is where you decide which interfaces will be used for load balancing and how each internet connection will operate. Since we're using two one connections, both interfaces are shown here for configuration. A member is a one interface added to a load balancing group with a metric and weight, determining its priority and traffic share. For example, two members with equal metric and weight share traffic equally, while differing metrics make one the main line and the other a backup. A policy defines a rule that groups one or more members, one lines, together to control how they are used. Simply put, members are individual one lines, and a policy decides how those lines work together. Examples. Load balance policy. Use two lines simultaneously. Failover policy. One line acts as main, the other as backup. Custom policy. Direct specific traffic, like gaming or YouTube, to a particular line. In short, a policy determines how much traffic goes through each line and which line serves as backup. To understand load balancing rules, you need to have some basic knowledge of advanced networking. If you already have that knowledge, you'll be able to create new rules here quite easily. Interestingly, 
You can also use artificial intelligence to generate rules automatically. However, since I don't have in-depth expertise on this particular feature, I won't go into much detail. But if you explore online, you'll find plenty of resources and detailed information about it. Next, we have the LAN option, which stands for Local Area Networking. From the settings here, you can change your IP address. If you don't want to use the default IP and prefer to set up a new one for your local network, you can easily configure it from this section. VPN Service Option In this section, you can enable and use VPN services, both on the server side and the client side. The supported VPN protocols include PPTP, Client and Server, L2TP, Client and Server, OpenVPN, Client and Server, WireGuard, Client and Server, Zero Tier, Master and Slave, IPSec, Site to Site. This means that from this router device, you can easily configure and use VPN connections based on PPTP, L2TP, OpenVPN, WireGuard, Zero Tier, and IPSec. Next, we have the DHCP server option. From here, you can see how many users are connected to your router, along with their MAC addresses and assigned IP addresses. You can also configure how many IP addresses will be available for users on your network. In short, the DHCP server makes IP management and user control much easier. Next, we have the device option. This feature allows you to view all the devices currently connected to your router, whether they are connected through a wired LAN port or via Wi-Fi. From here, you can check important details such as the device name, IP address, and MAC address. This helps you easily identify each connected device. For example, right now, you can see that only one device is connected. But in a real scenario, if multiple devices like laptops, smartphones, or smart TVs are connected, they will all be listed here. This option is very useful for monitoring and managing your network, as you can instantly know which devices are active and how they are connected. Next, we have the system option. From this section, you can find detailed information about your device, such as the model number, hardware version, the local time, and the system uptime, how long the router has been running without interruption. Then, you'll see the ARP table, which shows the IP history of connected devices, including their IP addresses, MAC addresses, and the interface they use to connect. After that, you have the active IP routes. This shows how your internet traffic is being routed, through which gateway, and from which one connection. Finally, there's the system log. Here, you can check detailed logs about system activities and see how users are interacting with the network. This section is very important for monitoring, troubleshooting, and keeping track of overall system performance. Next, let's look at the general settings. Here, the first option is WAN mode. You'll notice an illustration showing multiple Ethernet icons. The interesting part is that, although earlier we saw only two WAN connections being used, from here you can actually activate more WAN ports depending on your requirements. However, at least one port must remain as a LAN port so that internet can be distributed to your devices. The next option is WAN settings. This is where you configure the internet credentials for each one port, using the information provided by your ISP. All the one ports you activate will appear in a list at the top, and you'll need to configure them one by one. By default, they are often set to dynamic IP, but in your case, it could be PPPoE or static IP depending on your ISP. After that, you'll find the load balancing option. I've already explained this feature earlier. Basically, it allows you to use multiple one connections together for better performance or failover support. Since we've discussed it in detail before, I won't repeat the same information here. And finally, you'll see the VPN option. This is the same VPN menu I showed you earlier on the main dashboard, where you can configure both server-side and client-side VPN connections. There's nothing new here, it's simply another way to access the same VPN settings. LAN. This is where you configure your local area network, LAN, settings. You can set change the router's IP address, default gateway, subnet mask, and LAN DHCP range. Useful if you don't want to keep the default 192.168.101 and want a custom internal network. DHCP server. DHCP automatically assigns IP addresses to devices on your network. Here you can enable disable DHCP, set IP ranges, define lease time, or assign static IPs to specific devices. IPv6. Internet protocol version 6 support. 
used if your ISP provides IPv6 addresses, lets you configure IPv6 address type, native, 6 to 4, or tunnel, for better future compatibility. CoS, quality of service, prioritizes certain types of network traffic. Example, give higher priority to gaming or video calls over normal downloads so that they don't lag. Custom DS, lets you set your own DNS servers, like Google DNS 888 or Cloudflare DNS 111, instead of using your ISP's DNS. Helps improve speed, reliability, and even bypass restrictions. DDNS, Dynamic DNS, assigns a domain name, like myhome.dns.org, to your changing public IP address. Very useful if you want to access your home network remotely without remembering IPs. Static routing, used to manually define a route for network traffic between subnets. Example, if you have two Reuters networks, you can tell router A how to reach router B's network. Port forwards. Open specific ports on your router for services like web servers, game servers, CCTV, or NAS. Example, forward port 80 to host a web server inside your network. Port trigger. Similar to port forwarding, but dynamic. It opens certain ports only when a specific outgoing connection is detected. Often used for gaming or video conferencing applications. DMZ, Demilitarized Zone, exposes one device to the internet outside of the firewall protection. Useful for troubleshooting or hosting services, but not recommended for regular use, security risk. TTL, Time to Live, adjusts the TTL value of packets leaving your network. Some ISPs use TTL to detect tethering hotspot usage. Changing TTL helps bypass such restrictions. Wake on LAN, WOL. Allows you to remotely power on a computer or server in your LAN using a magic packet. Great for IT admins or home users who want to wake up a PC remotely. UPnP, Universal Plug and Play. Automatically opens ports for applications that request them, like online games, Skype, or streaming apps. Convenient but can be a security risk if left always on. Security Options. Firewall. The core security feature that blocks unwanted or malicious traffic from entering your network. You can create rules to allow or deny specific types of traffic. MAC filter. Restrict or allow devices on your network based on their MAC address. Example, only allow your family's devices and block all unknown devices. IP filter. Similar to MAC filter but works with IP addresses. You can block or allow internet access for a specific IP range or device. Domain filter. Let's you block or allow access to specific websites' domains. Example, block social media websites during office hours. IP MAC binding. Binds a specific IP address to a MAC address, ensuring devices always get the same IP. Useful for better security and preventing IP conflicts. Remote web. Allows you to manage the router's web interface from outside your home office network. Very useful for remote administration, but it should be used carefully with strong passwords for security. ALG, Application Layer Gateway. Helps certain applications, like VOIP, SIP, FTP, work properly through NAT, Network Address Translation. It automatically adjusts network settings for smooth communication. System Options. Time Zone. Lets you set the correct time zone for your router. Important for logs, scheduled tasks, and VPN connections. Firmware. Used to update the router's operating system. Keeping firmware updated ensures new features, bug fixes, and improved security. Backup, restore. Allows you to backup your current router configuration. If needed, you can restore the same settings later after reset or firmware upgrade. Admin account. Here you can change the router's login username and password. Very important to secure this to prevent unauthorized access. Language. Change the interface language based on your preference. Timed restart. Schedule automatic reboots for your router at specific times. Useful to keep the router running smoothly without manual restarts. Reboot. Restarts the router without changing any settings. Reset. Restores the router to factory default settings. Useful if you face major configuration errors or want a fresh start. Diagnosis options. Internet. This checks whether your router is properly connected to the internet. If it shows white heavy check mark, green check, your internet is working fine. 
If it fails, additional diagnostic tools. Ping. Sends packets to a server, like Google DNS, 8888, to check connectivity and response time. Helps confirm if the internet is reachable and whether there's packet loss. Traceroot. Shows the path data takes from your router to a destination server. Useful for identifying where delays or network failures occur along the route. NSLUKUP. Used to test DNS resolution. Helps check if domain names, like google.com, are being correctly translated into IP addresses. System Log. Displays detailed logs of router activities and errors. Essential for advanced troubleshooting to see why a connection failed.